Hi everyone, um, we're back here again today with Registered Migration Agent Guru and you might have caught our quick video last week on Victoria's skilled migration and we're back again today to share some more information on that for you. Hi Guru, how are you? Good, hi Sachi. Good, thank you. Doing well? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you for joining us today, Guru. Um, so I guess let's just jump straight into it. So can sure. you just shed a little bit of light on uh, Victoria's visa subclass 190, please? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Sasrikal, hello. Um, namaste. Um, so basically, Victoria's skill migration, I spoke about last week about it because it, it just opened yesterday. <clears throat> It was meant to open on 7th. Um, so they have started taking ROIs that is known as uh, registrations of, uh, sorry, registration of interests. So initial um, thing which you need to do is uh, registration of interest. And then um, I'll, 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 I'll explain you the process um, down the line. Um, so Victoria Skill Migration 2021 has opened a new uh, ROIs on um, 7th of July, that is yesterday. Um, you will be glad to know the department has um, provided Victoria with uh, 3,500 sub uh, allocations for visa subclass 190 and 500 places for visa subclass 491. Um, this year, Victoria government will be selecting candidates who are currently living and working in Victoria using their STEM skills in the target sector. STEM means science, technology, engineering, and uh, manufacturing. All right, so uh, what is the eligibility uh, and process for this visa 190 for Victoria? Um, I can just answer you this question, Sachi. Um, to be eligible for this visa, you must have had your ROI, that is registration of interest selected. To apply for Victoria skilled migration visa nomination, you must make an expression of interest first. Mm -hmm. And then the second step would be, apply for registration of uh, interest all right so please remember um, if you if, if you guys know about canberra metrics this is something like that so they have got their own system of um, not calculating the points but just accepting the uh, applications apart from eoi mm -hmm. please remember one cannot uh, update an roi if once it is submitted so once you have submitted ROI, that is the restriction of interest, I will be using ROI quite frequently. So please understand ROI means restriction of interest. Um, that cannot be amended. And one can only have one active ROI submitted mm -hmm. at any time. So you cannot submit you know, as many as you like, you just have to have one only. So please be very careful when you, when you apply for it. Or I mean, of course, we'll be able to help you out if you want to take our assistance. Uh, you cannot submit a separate ROI for each subclass. Um, if you wish to change the subclass or anything else on your ROI, you must withdraw the existing ROI and then apply afresh. So this is how you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you think that there's some mistake you have done or uh, there was something which you wanted to add to, you need to withdraw the existing one and then apply afresh. Um, have your ROI selected and receive an invitation to apply? Prepare your evidence to support your application. Um, submit a nomination application via the live in Melbourne portal. So Melbourne has, Victoria has got its own portal known as Live in Melbourne. Um, respond to any request for further information within the next 14 days. They, I mean, in case if the case officer thinks that there's something which they need to know or get some more information or documents from you, they will send you a request which needs to be answered and replied back within 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, live in Victoria, uh, live and work in Victoria. This is the second thing which is important. You must be living and working in Victoria in your uh, nominated occupation. Work in uh, Victorian target sector using your STEM skills. There is no minimum requirement of work experience. That is a good thing about uh, this time in Victorian um, 190 uh, subclass visa. Um, the sectors which are included in there, they are health, medical, life sciences, digital. Now, just remember, in under the digital sector, at the moment, Victorian government is considering just uh, one sector, which is, I mean, one uh, area of uh, NSCO code, 
which is cybersecurity skills only. You may you can apply for other um, and skills as well if you work under different skills under the IR digital sector, but that may be um, make you eligible for 491 visa, but not what for not for 190 or they may allocate you or they may nominate you for 491 visa instead of 190 visa. Other fields are agri food, advanced manufacturing, uh, new energy emission reduction and circular economy. So these are the uh, seven fields which uh, our sectors, um, they are looking to get um, in addition, I mean, applications from. Other basic things are, you must be under 45 of years of age, have at least competent English, have a valid skills assessment, that is a positive skills assessment, and have achieved at least 65 points, including the state nomination points. Mm -hmm. Great. I would just like to reiterate here as well that it's really important that when you're submitting your ROI, you can't update it once it's submitted, like you said, Guru. So it's really important yeah. you do it right the first time and at New Age we That's can right. help yeah. you submit your yeah. ROI so there's no um, issues with that. So, yeah. That's correct. Um, yeah. So what type of employment will be accepted for this visa? Um, so the employment must be currently working the basic uh, the person should be working uh in victoria in the target sector that is very important thing mm -hmm. the person must be working in there uh, the good thing about it is that they are ex accepting the casual employment as well okay uh, a role that is closely related to the nomination uh, nominated occupation that will be accepted as well and if not, if and if you are working by any chance in any occupation which is not closely related or related to the nominated occupation, in that case your application will not be accepted and will not be processed at all. Mm -hmm. So it has to be very clearly closely related or nominated uh, or or related occupation. Um, following, uh, there are few occupations um, which uh, advance the skills. Basically, they are level one or level two and school code. They are few levels of, uh, if you would have seen, um, those levels are accepted in uh, under this category and the STEM skills are, or the qualifications are required for this. So these are the uh, employment um, standards which they are expecting from the applicants that the person should have uh, to be able to apply for visa of subclass 190. Great. Um, and so I know there might be some people who aren't currently living in Victoria who are interested by this. Um, can they be living outside of Victoria or do they have to be inside Victoria? No, they have to be, uh, they must be currently living in Victoria. That is the most important condition um, of uh, applying for this visa in Victoria. Okay, so one great. must be uh, living in there. Yeah. Hmm. And um, what are the English language, language requirements? So you must have competent uh, level of English um, minimum. That is a minimum requirement and the result must be valid for at least 12 weeks at the time of submitting a nomination application, not mm -hmm. at the time of ROI or like when you actually get, um, when you apply for nomination, your English result must be valid for at least 12 weeks from then. Okay. And how many points are required? So minimum six feet, 65 points, including five points for the state nomination. So technically, if you see, if you have 60 points of your own, you are still, you are eligible for applying for this visa, but there is no guarantee that you will be getting, um, uh, I mean, nomination or uh, invitation for this visa because um, there are so many people already in queue. Uh, I mean, they will be, and they, I think the higher the points people will have, the greater the chances of getting invitation. Mm -hmm. So um, 65 is basically a basic requirement, but the higher you have, the greater the chances are getting invitation. Um, and what's the application fee for the nomination? So for uh, the nomination, there is no application fee for the Victor increment. So that's a good oh, thing. Great. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's more more reason for um, people living in Victoria to apply. Of course, well. of course. Definitely. Um, for applying for this visa, uh, you're welcome to contact us and we will be able to assist you in every possible way to make your application stronger. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to get an invitation, um, we will we'll try maximum our, our, our best. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Guru. And if anyone um, has any questions, please shoot them through and or give us a call and we'll be able to help you out. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sachi, and uh, take care of yourself. And uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining once again. Please feel free to contact us. We'll be able to assist you in every possible way. 
Um, as you know, we have got 30 minutes uh, free consultation as well. So please feel free to contact us and take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care.